Another open method that we are going to see is the inverse quadratic interpolation method. And this is basically a modification of the second method. So on the left hand side, in the first picture, you see the second method. Because you, in the second method, we predict the derivative with a certain line, uh, which goes through two guesses, the first guess and the second guess. So the intersection of this line with the x-axis gives us a prediction of the root, which is uh, uh, the zero point of the function. The intersection, oh, yes, we said that already. And because we have a straight line in between two guesses, th this is called also linear interpolation method. But of course, this can be a bad prediction compared to the actual uh, zero point. And that's why instead of a linear uh, interpolation, people recommended to use a quadratic interpolation. And in that, then we will have three points. So the first point and the second point, as you can see here, but we will also have another point here, like here. We, so we need three guesses. And a quadratic in interpolation function, which is shown by black over here, is, is passing through these three points. Then the uh, the function, this function, when it crosses the x-axis, it gives us a prediction of the actual root, and it can that's why uh, provide a closer prediction. As you can see here, it's further here, it's closer. So this is called inverse quadratic interpolation method because we simply use a quadratic. Uh, formula rather than using a linear formula and it's simply an improved second method inverse quadratic interpolation method is better than the second method because it is using a second order degree polynomial but we have a big issue for this inverse quadratic interpolation method and that is that it is possible that the parabola might not intersect the x-axis and such would be the case when the resulting parabola has complex roots. Uh, especially here, for example, you see a blue curve which crosses three points, but it doesn't really intersect the x-axis. And we need to have um, the intersection with x-axis to have a root, a real root. And this shows that we don't have actually uh, any real root, but it has complex roots. So this is quadratic interpolation. This blue line is y equals fx and has a quadratic interpolation. On the other hand, we can have another option, which is inverse of it. You can see here, intersect with x-axis. So we combine again the three points with another uh, quadratic polynomial. And in this scenario, it can cross the x-axis and it gives us the root. So we can have this issue of having this not intersecting, but we can somehow, if we can have the inverse of it, now we can have the intersection. And that's why it's called inverse quadratic, because we are having the inverse to be able to have a intersection with the x-axis. So here, what is the formula for the inverse quadratic interpolation? We can simply have so because we will have uh, three points, then we will have x minus 2, x minus 1, and, and xi. And the resulting values are these. So for, with these, we will have a three-term inverse quadratic interpolation method, as you can see here. And this form is called a Lagrange polynomial. So now think about that we will just plug y equals 0 into here because the y will be 0 at the root position. When we add that, let me simply write 0 here, 0 here, 0, 0. Just the y values will be 0. This one, this one, nothing else. So if these are 0, you can see here, the two terms are over here. And the bottom is the same, x minus 2. Here as well, these are the same here without uh, y values and bottom is the same this is the same y i minus 2 and y i minus 1 as you can see and the uh, denominator and xi are the same so we make this equal to xi plus 1 because when we give 0 this will give us the root 
x value for example here it's about 4 then this is our formulation actually so we will use this in the inverse quadratic interpolation so that we can have uh, a polynomial which will always intersect the x-axis so basically we are using this inverse quadratic and x is here and f function is depending on the y values three a prediction of the function values so that we can have the inverse quadratic interpolation method which crosses the x-axis and get us a result in this slide we have an example for the inverse quadratic interpolation method in which we will check the real root uh, prediction and as well as a complex root by using the regular function as you can see here so in this we want to have the first three uh, initial guess are these and for the first we will just check y equals fx function this blue one which doesn't intersect x-axis and we will use quadratic formula to illustrate that the roots are complex then for the latter or the next one we will use this x equals gy which is the black function here and we will find the root using inverse quadratic interpolation to estimate the root and remember that we had this equation for the quadratic interpolation not inverse but regular quadratic interpolation so for this one we will have it but we need to have this in terms of axis so instead of using y's we will use axis here that's why we will modify this as x values think about that these are all x Sorry, these are y and this is y. This is y and these are x. And then let's have our initial points in here. So x minus 2, i minus 2 equals 1, y i minus 2 equals 2. Then x i minus 1 equals 2, y i minus 1 equals 1, and 4 and 5, x i equals 4, and y i equals 5. And we will use this into in the this in this function. So let me just erase these and write these values onto this so that you can see that easier. And think that again, y's are x, x's are y here we will start with y and y means we don't know y value because that's the predicted that will be the predicted x value so we will just write x and y i minus one is one uh, but uh, this will be x i minus one so it's two this one let me write two here here again x minus y i is x i actually this one Four. and at the bottom y i minus 2 means x i minus 2 which is 1 this is 1 y i minus 1 is x i minus 1 and it is 2 so we will simply reversing and this y i minus 2 is x i minus 2 and it is 1 y i is x i and it's 4 and xi minus 2 is the yi minus 2 and it is 2 here so this is 2 similarly here this is x and xi minus 2 is 1 y is x and this yi is xi it is 4 and at the bottom xi minus 1 2 xi minus 2 1 xi minus 1 2 and yi is xi and that's 4 and on the right hand side xi minus 1 is yi minus 1 and it is 1 let's continue 
this is x y i minus 2 is 2 sorry that will be x i minus 2 because we are changing the y's to x x i minus 2 is 1 and this is x again and x i minus 1 is 2 and here x i is 4 x i minus 2 is 1 and y i is x i 4 and y i minus 1 is x i minus 1 and it's 2 and finally x i is y i it's 5 okay we completed it by using these we will have as you can see a polynomial if we collect these terms collecting the terms will give us a simple for function let me write it in blue f x because actually this is fx because we will write y's in terms of x's and fx is equivalent to x square minus 4x plus 5 if you make all the operations uh, in this function simply you will get this function value so and we we will have this x squared minus 4x plus 5 as the equation and we simply we will uh, have we, we had this y equals fx function actually this one and the quadratic formula can be used to determine the roots for this case are complex and we can simply use our um, root finding equation for this second order polynomial which is x equals b which is 4 plus minus root square minus 4 square minus 4 times a is 1 and c is 5 you already know this uh, root finding formulation that's why I'm not writing the actual equation and divide by 2. In here, you, you will see that in the root square, we will have a minus value. That's why we will have a complex root. And it, it, comes, it becomes as 2 plus minus i. This is the complex, complex root. And the reason is that we have this blue line which doesn't intersect x-axis that means a complex root okay now we finished this first one we finished this let's check the second one in the second one we want to have the actual inverse quadratic interpolation so in here we had only the quadratic interpolation but in the second one we will have inverse for the inverse we will use um, the actual equation of this with the y values not the x value we are not changing x or x and y's and if we do so um, let me write the function so it's it will be gy instead of fx because it's the actual function here that we showed and let me write just the values um, and if you remember it was starting with y's y minus 1 y minus 5 divided by 2 minus 1 2 minus 5 times 1 plus you can check these to verify later 1 minus 2 1 minus 5 and 2 and plus y minus 2 y minus 1 divided by 5 minus 2 5 minus 1 and times 4 so if we collect the terms we will obtain and gy is equivalent to 0.5 y square minus 2.5 y and plus 4 so this is our function now which is represented as this black curve here.
this is basically this one so gy is x and these are in terms of y values and now to predict the roots of these we can use the formulation that we showed for inverse quadratic interpolation and it was given as okay we will equate y as zero then we will continue so let's write that set y equals zero because if y is zero then we will have the root then x i plus one is equivalent to here if we set y zero you can see it's zero 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 simply the same values let me write just the uh, result here because it's minus one minus five multiplication and bottom you can make these operations simply this and when you have these results you will get only four for the xi plus one and graphically you can see that this function is actually crossing uh, the zero axis at four so it gives the root for us because we set y equals zero and y is zero and xi plus one is four you can see that the inter inverse quadratic formula can provide us the real root however uh, the regular quadratic interpolation doesn't provide it to us it gives us a complex root so the, this is the uh, good advantage of inverse using the inverse quadratic interpolation that's why this method is called as inverse quadratic interpolation method another issue for the quadratic interpolation is that uh, we have if you remember three values y and x values and the function y values of three of these uh, actually two of them can be equal to each other for example y i minus two and y i minus one can be equal to each other or y i minus one and y i can be equal to each other in this scenario we don't have an inverse quadratic function so in these cases we can always use the less efficient second method because in the second method we only have two initial guesses and in these equalities that means again we will have actually uh, two values instead of three because one of them is equal to another one so we can generate a root using second method in this case for example if we have y i minus two and y i minus one equal to each other then we can use the second method with the value with the x values which gives the different y values and those are the others rather than having i minus 2 we will just have i minus 1 and i as you can see and similarly y i minus 1 if this is equivalent to y i then we will use the second method by using i minus 2 and i minus 1 values so this is simply a simplification of the quadratic interpolation to as linear interpolation because we have unfortunately an equivalent of y values